So we are doing a special relativity introduction uh, this week. And so we have two more weeks of special relativity. There are some aspects of special relativity that uh, we won't get to uh, today uh, and this week because uh, we are saving them for later. So um, the main thing that you are saying um, this week are really introduction of some new conventions. Um, the Lorentz factor gamma is one of the things that we introduced early on, um, as early as when we were starting to talk about time dilation effect as we were uh, driving that from really the, the second postulate of special relativity. So, uh, so let me write down the expression for gamma on screen and just to work this out numerically. And there are some things that I'm hoping to demonstrate with this numerical example that I will, you know, write it out and show you. <laughs> so, um, so this is the, the formula for gamma. It's, a, it's, the, it's kind of convention. <laughs> uh, it, it's a shorthand that we use for a factor that we see a lot in special relativity. Gamma is defined as one over square root of one minus V squared over C squared. And, um, I think it's, uh, it's uh, convenient to introduce one more quantity, which is the quantity of beta. So it's a speed of, light, a speed of something specified as a fraction of speed of light. So you can call beta as, a, for example, a V over C speed of something divided by speed of light. So in terms of beta, I can write this gamma in a more compact-ish form, one over square root of one minus beta squared. Yeah, that not having that nested fraction kind of <laughs> makes it more visually pleasing. And uh, in many questions, you will see this, that speed is specified as a fraction of speed of light already. So the question itself will be, Giving you, um, giving you what we call beta. So, um, so in this form, I don't have to worry about dividing by c. It's already there. So let me just plug in the numbers and show you. Um, uh, for part a, it's uh, saying my beta is zero point two nine. So let me plug that in. So it's gonna be one over. Uh, square root of one minus beta squared. I think the way my calculator works, I have to do this first. Um, parenthesis, one minus a beta, 0 0.29 squared, square, uh, close parenthesis, and I think I can put it under square root. Yeah, square root goes with the uh, parenthesis. So what's here is the square root thing, and when I hit equals, it'll do the division to give me 1.0449. And um, the note says to calculate gamma correctly down to at least a thousand place. So uh, I will do that. Normally I would round it to like three significant figures. And um, in special relativity, you will see that very often that doesn't really give you enough of precision. So in the questions, I will generally try to give you a uh, precision guideline so that you don't, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you simply plug in 1.04, it'll say it's wrong, yeah. So I'll try to give you some precision um, tolerance guide guide so that you can um, specify correct uh, precision. So I'm gonna put in 1.045, I think will work, but let me just do 49. So 1.049. So, so that's gamma. Um, and let me just plug in the beta equals 0 0.58. And there's a way these numbers are generated actually. So, you know, one of them is generated randomly and the second number is generated to be twice the first number on purpose. So <laughs> let me calculate that and see, let's see what we get. One divided by, and let me do the thing under the square root first, one minus beta 0 0.58 squared, close the parenthesis and then do the square root equals. 1.2276, 1.2276. So I hope you are beginning to notice something. Um, it might be 
easier to know this if I give you gamma for one more value. So, you know, what is gamma if beta is equal to zero? Um, you can actually see from here, one divided by square root of one minus zero, that whole thing is just the one. So, so that's what gamma would be if you had beta equal to zero. So from zero to 0 0.29c, you see beta has changed by 0.449. Now, as the speed doubles, gamma changes a lot more. So gamma, the difference in the gamma doesn't simply double, you know, go to 1.09, it didn't do that. It went to 1.2276. This is uh, something that I will highlight in a, a more detail in the upcoming weeks. Um, there's a way in which uh, speed scales and there's a way in which gamma scales that um, they behave quite differently. And uh, that's, uh, I think, is something worth watch out for, watching out for, which is why I went through this uh, number plugging in exercise. And uh, the next question is uh, similar, except it um, uh, demonstrates further uh, how this works. So um, I preserved all the writings because I think I can still use a lot of it. So I'm calculating the Lorentz factor for these two different cases. And these are now constructed differently. Um, I don't know if there was an actual fraction here, but um, the second, so first number is rather small. The second number is designed to be rather large. So let's see with a beta equals 0 0.14, you know, 14% of speed of light, what kind of gamma we get. So oh, one divided by, oops, uh, one divided by uh, the thing that's gonna be under square root, one minus beta squared, 0 0.14 squared close the parentheses and then square root uh, and then equal to get gamma. Oh, it's, um, so if I were rounding to uh, two, uh, three significant figures, I would barely get 1.01. .01. And oh, I guess that is actually about right. Uh, let me just uh, plug in. Um, I think if I do put in 1.01, .01, it'll say it's right. But let me just uh, put in these other digits just uh, for kicks. Um, 1.00995, that's what I believe I had. Good, so, so you see that uh, the gamma factor, the Lorentz factor, which gives uh, how much uh, time dilation or length contraction occurs, even at 14% of speed of light, which is, um, it's pretty big value. I don't think we have a lot of things that move at 14% of speed of light, except for um, high energy particles in particle accelerator. Um, so even at this speed, the special relativistic effect comes in at only 1% of um, overall things. It, uh, um, it, so I just want to impress that, um, impress on you that Special relativistic effects are difficult to no notice at everyday speeds. Even at non-everyday speeds of 14% of speed of light, it take, it, you only get 1% effect. Now, when you are at 86% of speed of light, you will see uh, more of an effect. Oh, well, I think I know what the answer here is. And I'm remembering how I chose these numbers. I think that's gonna be two. <laughs> but let me just do the calculation to be sure. Um, one divided by parenthesis, one minus 0 0.86 squared. Um, okay, take the square root. Uh, equals, yeah, <laughs> close enough to two, 1.9597. Uh, five, five, um, so, so what this is showing is the level of speeds where you get special relativistic effect of 1% and the amount of speed where you get special relativistic effect of a, about a factor of two. So this is, at this speed is where you do see length contraction of 50% or time dilation of a factor of two. It, um, and yeah, so. So as I was saying in the previous question, the 
kind of a different scaling relationship between V and gamma that'll, um, I want to just uh, watch on an eye for it. I think we'll get into it more when we start doing special relativistic momentum and energy that's uh, coming down the line either next week or the week after. Um, and as we are getting there, I just want to alert you to uh, these different numerical behaviors so that when you see it, it's not surprising. <laughs> 